We're now going to give uh, users the ability to reply to statuses. So we can type something in here, hit reply, and it will be rendered indented just under here. And we can reply as many times as we want. And once again, we're going to be storing these replies within the statuses table, but the parent ID will relate to the status that someone is replying to. So this isn't as tricky as it sounds, but we need to set up our new uh, controller method and we need to set up our routing and things like that. So let's make sure we have our status controller open and inside of here, we're going to have our post reply method. So we're going to have a public function post reply. And this is going to take again our request here because we're posting data through but it will also take a status ID, the status ID that we're replying to. And obviously we need to make sure that the uh, user that we're replying to is our friend because obviously otherwise we'd be able to pass a number in and reply to anyone's status. So we need to take that into account as well. So let's create our route while we're at it. And for this, I'm just gonna copy and paste this a little bit easier. So we're posting to status and then the status ID so that will be status ID and then reply. So here it will be post reply status dot reply. And we need our auth middleware on there as well. So we can return to our uh, page here and update our form. So let's just update this. So it's root status dot reply. This is our timeline. Remember, and we also need to change this because for validation, because we're outputting everything on the same page, we need to know uh, which ID we're actually replying to. So all we do is we output the status ID in here. So we just say status ID, and then that reply will know which um, status we're replying to. We also need our hidden input here for our cross-site request forgery token. So let's do that now. So let's remember we're using the session facade and then the token method. And over in our status controller, let's just do a die dump on the status ID that we're applying to, just so we know that this works. Okay, so let's try and reply to this one. Hit reply, and we get status ID. So this is obviously uh, wrong. Let's go over and check our route. Got status ID there, and in our status controller. Of course. So what we're not doing is actually on our timeline. We're not actually uh, passing this in. So we need to do that now. Status ID. Status ID. So let's refresh here. Okay. And we'll just fix this up. So obviously that needs to be an array. There we go. So just write test to be quick. There we go, so status ID of three. So we can pick out that status. We can check if the user, the current user, which is me, is friends with this user. And then if so, we can take the body from this reply and we can create a new status. We can attach it via the parent ID and then it will become a reply. And then we can output replies. So our form uh, name or this name here is reply hyphen and then the status ID. So under our status controller, we know that we have the status ID so we can validate this and grab the data accordingly. So all we do to validate is this validate. We do the same thing. We pass through the request. We pass in our array and this time the field name is reply hyphen status ID. That's what we're validating because it's going to be different every time. And we want this to be required and we want it to be a max of a thousand, but obviously you can change that up. So the next argument I'm passing in is a custom error message for required because this will look a bit funny otherwise. So I'm just going to say the reply body is required. That's it. So now that we've got that, let's just kill the page there. And once again, we'll say all okay. And we'll see what happens here. 
So if I wanted to reply to this status, I hit reply, all OK. If I wanted to reply to this status and I didn't enter anything, we're redirected back and that will give us that error message. So we need to handle the errors that we get out here and that's simple. All we do in here is we do exactly as we've done before. So we say errors has, this is slightly different because what we need to do is check if it's reply and then the number that we're applying. So in this case, it will be status ID. Then we want to output has error, otherwise nothing, empty string. So we can check this by just replying. Okay, so let's check what's happened just here. Ah, of course it's reply hyphen and then the status ID. So let's reply again and that goes red and we can output the error message as well as uh, down here. And we'll say errors has exactly the same thing, reply hyphen and then the status ID and then we'll do our span with our help block class and we'll output errors first reply and then the status ID like that so let's check this out let's hit reply the body the reply body is required and then we get the same for each one and if you are wondering why we're doing this with the with the status in here, with the reply hyphen, it's because if we didn't, and this was just called reply, on this page we would see the error for all fields because it's just one field called reply. So there are other ways of structuring this, but for now if you did want to do this, that's the way to go about it. So uh, if we were to type something in here and hit reply, we get all okay. So we now need to look at actually inserting that record relating it to the reply, relating it to the user, checking if this is our friend first of all, and all that kind of stuff. So before we get started with that, we need to update the reply, uh, the status model because um, there are two different types of statuses in the same table and we need an easy way to distinguish between them. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a scope which allow us using the query builder to filter out anything we don't want. And that means that we have a scope here called not reply. And this will basically allow us to chain this on to our query or our builder and select any, any um, statuses that aren't replies. So we have our query builder passed in here and we return query where null, remember we have a nullable parent ID, so where null parent ID. So we need to update uh, a couple of places with, for, for this um, and we'll do this quickly now so we don't get into trouble later. On our home controller, where we're pulling in the list of user statuses, let's say I replied to this status, that would then exist in the database table as another record and therefore the reply would be pulled through as a normal status. So we need to filter these out. So what we're going to do is we're going to say not reply like that. And that will only pull things that are not replies for our main timeline list. And the reason that uh, the scopes um, are nice is because we can just use scope prepended. We can then use the method name not reply and it will just uh, filter out. It's just a nice way to keep everything nice and tidy and reusable. So now that we've done that, we can go ahead and actually insert our status. And we also need to use the not reply scope here too. So let's say status equals status not reply find status ID. That's going to find that status that we need to reply to. And remember up here, we need to go ahead and import our status model as well. So now we have the status that we are ready to reply to. We need to check if that status exists first of all. So we're going to say if not status, then we want to return and redirect, I don't know, to the home page. You can show an error if you want, it's entirely up to you. The next thing we need to do is check that the currently authenticated user is friends with the user whose status this is. And we already have methods for that. Remember we implemented that 
when we were creating uh, everything. If we just head over to our user model, we'll be able to see that. Uh, so let's find it here is friends with. So we know that we have that available to use. So our next check is going to be if not auth user is friends with and then the user who owns the status. So we just say status user because remember we have that relationship between status and user. And we want to make sure that the auth user ID doesn't equal the status user ID. All that means is, are we trying to reply to our own status? Well, if we are trying to reply to our own status, we want to allow that. So in that case, we're not friends with ourself, but this will then allow us to reply to our, our, our own statuses. So if that's the case, then we can just redirect back home like so. Okay, so um, now that we've got them checks in place, we might want to just test this. So at the moment, um, I don't know if I'm friends with Dale. I currently am, so I'm just going to actually manually remove that. So uh, Dale is user ID of two, so let's get rid of that. So I'm now only friends with Billy. So uh, over on my timeline then, I'm going to try and reply to this. I'm going to inspect this element here and under the status here, I'm going to change this to 10. So that doesn't exist currently. So I'm going to say hello, hit reply, and I'm redirected back to the home page. Nothing has happened. We're not doing anything. So now I'm going to try and reply to a status posted by a user that I'm not friends with. So over on Firefox, let me just go ahead and sign out. I'm going to sign in as Dale. And we'll go ahead and post a status. Hi there. Okay, so let's check the status ID of this. Uh, if we go to statuses, that's status ID four. So over on my account, I'm not friends with Dale. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to inspect this again. I'm gonna change this to status four. And I'm gonna try and reply to it. And again, that's redirected us back. It's not done anything. So these two checks are now working. We can actually reply to the status. So I'm going to say reply equals status create. And there are lots of different ways to do this. I'll let you decide uh, if you want later on. So we're creating a status with a body. And that is request input. And then again, remember it's reply and then the status ID because each one's unique. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say user. So we're going to the user of that and we're going to uh, the user relation and we're going to associate us with that reply. And then we're going to say status, which is the status we pulled in up here, replies, save reply. So all this is doing then is it's creating a status, associating it with us, and all that means is that when we do create the status, we have a user ID set to whatever. So in my case, it'd be one. And then we save this reply to the replies relation on the status. So it will just create a reply from it. And that will create our parent ID from that. So then what we want to do is return, we want to redirect back. And we are done. You can show some information if you want there. So let's get rid of this and let's try this out. So what's so funny, hit reply. Okay, so we've got uh, build up replies, ah, of course. So over on our status, we don't actually have a replies relationship set up. Uh, so we'll quickly do that. That's really important. And this is basically a relationship that relates back to the same model. So we're gonna say public function replies and we're gonna return this has many, it can have many replies. And the model is the same model that we're currently using, which is status. So we just say chatty models status, and we relate that via the parent ID. Let's just make sure nothing's been created in here. It has, so we'll just delete that. So back over to the timeline. What's so funny, hit reply, and there we go. 
that's inserted. It won't show at the moment, but you can see here that it's been posted by user ID 1, and the parent ID has now been set to 3, just because of the way that we saved that over here. So now we have uh, status ID 3, which was lol, and then this one's what's so funny. So there we go. So we've now successfully replied to a status, but we're not showing the replies. So we're going to go ahead and do that in the next video.